Hello, and welcome to Great Lit Chit Chat, where we chit chat with people about Great Lit. Or mature. I'm your host, Mr. Osborne, and today I'm talking with Professor Alfred D. Ravenhurst about Edgar Allan Poe. Thank you for coming. Delighted to be here. Alf, Edgar Allan Poe is one of the least famous British authors. I couldn't find him anywhere on the Wikipedia list. Well, that might be because he wasn't British. That's funny. What's funny? Well, of course he's British. No, he's not. He's American. But have you ever seen a picture? Of Rodney, do we have that picture? Can we roll that? Now that guy is definitely British. Nobody would put up with that outfit and that mustache in America. Well, I don't know about his mustache, but Poe himself was born in Massachusetts in 1809, which makes him American. His father was American? Yes. His mother? Moved to America when she was eight. From? London. But See? British. I knew it. Regardless, Edgar Allan Poe is one of the great American authors and poets of the 19th century. You'll have to list some of his works because I still don't know who he is. Well, his most famous poem is The Raven. Oh, I think I remember that one. I thought you might. It's about some kind of bird, right? A raven, actually. Uh, the bird visits a man who has lost the love of his life, a girl named Lenore. And the raven speaks to him as he slowly goes mad. See, he only focused on that one bird. Never more. Well, perhaps you're familiar with Annabel Lee, another of his poems. Is that the one about Lenore? No, it's about Annabel Lee. But she's dead, right? Yes, the poet is describing the strength of his love for Annabel Lee and how the angels took her away from him. But he still sees her beautiful eyes and the stars at night. It's a very poetic use of nature imagery. Yes, it is. I saw a cloud once that looked like a pineapple. Fascinating. So, why are all of Poe's women dead? Did he hate women? No, the two major female figures in his life died very young. Both his mother Eliza and his wife Virginia succumbed to what was called consumption by the time they were 24. Consumption? So they ate too much? No, consumption is the 19th century name for tuberculosis. Ah, yes. Tuberc... Tuberculosis. That. So, were all of Poe's poems written to dead people? No, in fact, one of his sonnets is called To Science. Interesting. You know, I once wrote an email to science asking how to make a bologna sandwich. Is science a real person? No. Did Poe know that? Yes, he did. He was merely personifying the subject of science in order to address its conflict with the heart of the poet. Yes, and what a telltale heart it was. What about movies? Did he write any of those? No, his fiction was written decades before film was invented. It was mostly short fiction. For example, he wrote The Cask of Amontillado. Montiado, the Botswanian pop singer. No, Amontillado. It's a type of wine which the narrator of the story uses to lure someone into his wine cellar in order to exact his revenge upon him. Hmm. I don't like that. Okay. Um... Uh, another famous short story that he wrote was The Fall of the House of Usher. I see. Go on. I was waiting for some comment about the pop singer Usher. I don't know who that is. The Fall of the House of Usher is the best example of Poe's use of totality, where all of the elements of the story are highly relevant to the plot. It's extremely suspenseful and builds a sense of fear throughout. It's quite gripping. So he was a psychopath. <laughs> this is pretty dark stuff, Alf. He was not a psychopath. He wrote during a time when gothic fiction was very popular, and Poe was quite skilled in writing that style of story. Gothic. So he wore black lipstick. Not that I know of. Gothic fiction was a combination of horror and romanticism that often featured ghosts, dark castles, death, and decay. Lovely stuff. Well, if you're looking for flowers and rainbows, you won't find them in Poe. He never really wrote anything light or happy in his lifetime. But Professor Ravenhurst, did Poe ever write anything light or happy in his lifetime? Are you, are you serious? I, j I just told you that. Well, that's all the time we have for today. I'd like to thank my guest, Professor Alfred D. Ravenhurst. Join us next time when we'll be discussing Charles Dickens. Who the Dickens is that? Thank <laughs> you.